One of the most popular ways to make a quick buck in Hollywood is to rip off a hit. And that practice has a long, sketchy history in the film industry around the world. After the massive success of 1977's Star Wars, it seemed like everybody got caught in the space craze, and the result was an entire subgenre of mockbusters that obviously wanted to be in a galaxy far, far away, but never quite got there. Here are a few of the strangest attempts to rip off Star Wars. Message from Space Everybody in the world wanted to make a Star Wars knockoff in 1978, and Japan's legendary Toei company was no exception. Message from Space stole its look and characterizations from Star Wars and mixed it with manga and anime, to generally bizarre results. The most striking thing about Message from Space is that despite only having half the budget of A New Hope, the special effects are surprisingly competent. Well, except for maybe this. Still, it pretty much owes its life to George Lucas. Most obviously lifted from Star Wars is a princess on the run, seeking help from wide-eyed space jockeys accompanied by a funny robot. On the other hand, Message from Space also had its own dramatic Yoda death scene way before Star Wars ever did. Aside from that, Message from Space feels like the movie a person might make if they'd heard a vague description of Star Wars but hadn't actually seen it. A comedian in drag plays an evil empress, and instead of the Force, there are space walnuts that fly around choosing people to do… something? Still beats midichlorians, though. Star Crash When most normal, well-adjusted humans watch Star Wars, they didn't come away thinking, that movie was pretty great, but it needed more weird swimsuits. As it turned out, Italian director Luigi Cosi wasn't a normal person. He quickly whipped up the movie Star Crash by 1979, a shameless Star Wars ripoff that was basically an excuse to get nearly naked women on camera. Star Crash tells the story of a war between a galactic empire and the evil Count Zartharm, who has a super weapon that the heroes have to blow up. Characters use lightsabers and fight evil robotic minions, but once those similarities are out of the way, Star Crash reaches a level of incredible ridiculousness that George Lucas could only touch in fever dreams. We've just survived an attack on the most powerful weapon in the entire galaxy. We have? Heroine Stella Star spends most of the movie in a bikini, gets captured by a tribe of scantily clad Amazons, is chased around by a giant robot woman, Look! Whoa! Run for your life! gets frozen, and helps the Empire win their giant space battle. Plus, as a bonus, a young and beautiful David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Luigi Cozy maintains that he came up with the script before Star Wars came out, though, so who knows? Maybe George Lucas was the one making the ripoff. Cozy definitely beat him when it came to making one of the heroes the bad guy's son. No! <laughs> Turkish Star Wars Also known as, um, words we can't hope to pronounce, this movie is unique among other rip-offs because it literally lifts footage straight from A New Hope and plops it into the movie. The Death Star, the Millennium Falcon, X-Wings, TIE Fighters, and the Mos Eisley Cantina all of these things can be found in Turkish Star Wars. And that isn't even the craziest thing about the movie. The film starts with two pilots, Murat and Ali, crashing on a desert planet during a space battle. Past that, there really isn't any hope of following the plot. Ali accidentally summons a skeleton army by whistling. There's a planetary shield made of human brain molecules that looks suspiciously like the Death Star. Murat karate chops monsters in half. Somewhere along the way, a story happens. When the movie came out, 20th Century Fox was evidently so stumped by it that they didn't even try to sue. Even today, Disney-owned Lucasfilm still hasn't taken action. It's so bad they don't even view it as a threat. But Star Wars probably would have been even cooler if Luke ripped the head off a of Wampa. The Shape of Things to Come in 1979, Canadian director George McCowan set out to make his own Star Wars knockoff, buying the rights to H.G. Wells' 1933 novel The Shape of Things to Come. Since Canada isn't really known as a science fiction hotspot, it's easy to guess how things turned out. 
The film was already off to a rough start because H.G. Wells' book is actually a speculative novel about the future of the world from 1933 to 2106, and it features a distinct lack of robots. Literally none of the things in the novel happen in the movie. McCowan just shamelessly bought the rights just so he could use a title people might know for his movie. And like most movies of the era, The Shape of Things to Come had a pretty low-budget look. Plot-wise, it's pretty much just Star Wars, just set on Earth's moon after a robot war. There's a bad guy who has a massive fortress, and a resistance movement trying to stop him. McCowan thought if he made the bad guy use robot drones as his minions, nobody would know it was a shameless ripoff. He was wrong. You're the hunter from the future. At first, Yor doesn't look much like a Star Wars ripoff. It starts out as a barbarian sword and loincloth feature set to the sweet sounds of 80s hair metal. We got a guy hunting dinosaurs, meeting magical people, and seducing willing winches. Who could possibly hate that? Then, suddenly, it's like the movie gets bored and goes full-on science fiction. The second half of the movie is about an evil organization led by a guy dressed in black robes that wouldn't look out of place in Knights of the Old Republic, evil minions who wear knockoff Darth Vader masks, and laser battles. Spoiler alert, turns out that Yor has actually been living on a post-apocalyptic sci-fi Earth with dinosaurs, which is pretty much every eight-year-old's dream. This wasn't even just a case of the screenwriter mashing stuff together. It's actually based off an Argentinian comic book of the same name, which was evidently popular enough to bring to the big screen. It's really not that bad an idea for a movie, but Yor deserves better. Star Chaser – The Legend of Oren It's the story of a young miner who discovers a magic sword and embarks on an epic quest to destroy an evil space empire with the help of robot sidekicks and a rogue criminal. And it's not Star Wars. Despite being an animated film, Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin, is way less kid-friendly than Star Wars. The characters swear a lot more, and the violence is even worse. And there's the, um, Fembot. The heroes pick up an oddly curvy, totally not C-3PO lady droid during their adventures. Like C-3PO, she's pretty annoying. So how do our heroes deal with it? They stick probes into her robot butt to reprogram her into a full-on sex bot. Despite a terrifying view into the filmmaker's fantasies, Star Chaser was pretty groundbreaking. It was one of the first 3D animated movies, and one of the first to combine computer graphics with traditional hand-drawn animation. Thankfully, those technologies were also used to make movies that weren't creepy Star Wars ripoffs. Space Mutiny In 1978, Glenn Larson managed to get Battlestar Galactica off the ground after years of shopping it around because of the success of Star Wars. Some might call it a total ripoff, but it found plenty of success in its own right. Enough success that a South African production company wanted to cash in on it 10 years later. The result was Space Mutiny. Without the money for special effects, the production just decided to go the easy route and steal effect shots from Galactica, use whatever office equipment they had around, and film the thing in brick buildings, which were supposed to represent areas of a spaceship. The story revolves around a mutiny on a colony ship, but the plot is skeletal at best. Characters die, only to reappear in the next scene, plot elements appear out of order, and it feels like key pieces of dialogue were cut. That doesn't mean the movie is without charm. It has an awesome go-kart chase through the engine room of the ship, a cool hula hoop dance club, and B-movie icon Cameron Mitchell hanging around in a bathrobe. The strangest element of the whole fiasco is that by 1988, ripoffs just weren't profitable anymore, and the movie has too much stolen footage to stand on its own. How they never got sued remains a space mystery. Battle Beyond the Stars Shock auteur Roger Corman threw his hat into the Star Wars ripoff ring with his 1980 film Battle Beyond the Stars. For those who aren't familiar with Corman's body of work, the dude was well known for making fast, cheap movies to capitalize on whatever craze was going on at the time. He knew how to stretch a budget and made the most semi-competent movies he could, and Battle Beyond the Stars was his most expensive to date, coming in at $2 million. The film ended up being surprisingly competent. It looked and felt just like Star Wars, but was more of a loose remake of Seven Samurai in Space. Most importantly, the plot actually kind of makes sense. Shockingly, it also has some future big names attached. James Cameron was in charge of special effects and art direction. James Horner wrote the score and liked it so much that he basically ripped off himself and reused it for Wrath of Khan. Khan! 
All of that made Battle Beyond the Stars the most skillfully made ripoff from the era. Even better, Corman, being the cheapskate he was, didn't break down the sets after filming and just reused them for yet another Star Wars ripoff, Space Raiders. That guy knew how to get the biggest bang for his buck. The Black Hole Story-wise, Disney's legendarily expensive The Black Hole actually has more in common with Star Trek than Star Wars, but with bumbling robot sidekicks, spaceships that look like Mos Eisley spaceport rejects, and costumes that look like they're fresh out of Darth Vader's supply closet, the Star Wars connection is undeniable. What makes this movie so bizarre is that it gets incredibly dark. Robot villain Maximilian is a frightening cross between Darth Vader and a Cylon biblical allusions and gruesome murder lurk around every plot point. Humans get melted with robots. And of course, we can't forget about the final scene, in which the characters are sucked into the black hole only to find the most convincing interpretation of hell ever set to film. Sleep well, Mouseketeers. There's arguably a good movie in the middle of the black hole, but Disney couldn't decide whether to make it child-appropriate or something more heady, like 2001 A Space Odyssey. Disney would have to wait a few decades to make actual Star Wars films. Amazingly, the studio has also started working on remaking the black hole. No word yet on whether Satan will make an appearance this time. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.